Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Nate. Here it is Thursday, November 17th. So we'll kick off Thursday Thoughts today by talking about Amazon's newly released tablet, the Kindle Fire. This 7-inch slate comes in at a $200 price tag, and uh, early tests thus far are showing that it is being outperformed by the iPad 2 in pretty much every category. Well, when you consider that $200 price tag, it is definitely a great value, especially if you're looking to just view your media files and do some web browsing while on the go. So I can definitely recommend it to anyone looking for a tablet on a budget. And if you can live without the cameras that the iPad 2 has or some sort of 3G connectivity, I definitely think you'll be happy with this product. So Apple, uh, Amazon's been able to create a new uh, market for tablets that, at this $200 price tag, and I think a lot of people are definitely going to be buying this for the holidays. And uh, if you take a look at Apple's line of products, the only thing that they've got in the same price range would be the iPod Touch. And if you're going to decide between a 3.5-inch uh, display or a 7-inch display, I think most people are going to go with the Kindle Fire. So we'll have to wait and see if Apple's got any way to respond to this in 2012 uh, when we see the next generation iPad. Maybe they'll come out with something uh, in a competitive price range. This week, Qualcomm issued a press release announcing their new Joby 4000 series chips, which are compatible both with 4G LTE and HSPA Plus in the same chip. Now, presumably, this is going to be what Apple will use in their upcoming products in 2012 the earliest being the iPad 3. So I know I'm really excited for this because we'll be able to see some true 4G speeds uh, while using our iPads. I know Ford, uh, Android owners have been uh, enjoying this for a while now, and I'll be excited to see this come to iOS hopefully in 2012. Last week, Apple issued the iOS 5.0.1 update, which was supposed to fix the battery issues that people were experiencing uh, on the iPhone 4S and other devices running iOS 5. Now, a lot of people are still having issues with it, and Apple says a fix is on the way. We're already hearing reports of iOS 5.0.2 coming in the near future. Additionally, we're hearing about iOS 5.1, which is supposed to include some Siri improvements uh, for access to quick settings such as turning on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or anything uh, similar to that. This week, DigiTimes is reporting that Apple has begun production of various parts to an upcoming ultra-thin 15-inch uh, notebook that is, going to, uh, that is rumored to be coming in March of 2012. Now, this is uh, presumably going to be replacing both uh, the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. It's going to sort of combine uh, both of those products into one, into one ultra-thin and powerful laptop. Uh, I know I'll be very excited for it, uh, but the only downfall is that they're probably going to remove the optical drive completely then uh, with their notebook computers. This week, Google made their native Gmail app once again available on the App Store for download. This comes after they initially removed it because of notification issues. Now, I have personally downloaded the app myself, and for the most part, it's similar to the Gmail web app uh, that you'll find if you head over to gmail.com uh, while surfing on your iPhone. But uh, Google does promise that many more features will be coming to the app in the future. So to wrap up Thursday Thoughts today, we're hearing a developer has figured out a way in order to unlock the iPhone 4S running on AT&T's network so it can be used with other GSM networks. Now, what's great about this is that I could simply pop in my T-Mobile SIM and use it without having to do any hardware or software modifications. So I'm going to test this out myself, and I'll definitely be uploading a video if I get it to work. So thanks for taking the time to watch Thursday Thoughts today. Please like it, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.